Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Dan. Uh, I represent the uh, team RNK, which basically means RNA in a Slavic language. So this is the agenda, as we all know, some background. Uh, I don't have some illustrious background like some of the other Keglers. I'm not working at any company. I don't have any uh, university degree. Uh, however, I'm very interested in deep learning and AGI specifically. So I'm doing like all of the research uh, independently at my home. Uh, prior knowledge, I had little to no knowledge of RNA or molecular biology before this competition. So I kind of spent the first portion just uh, of the competition just reading papers and uh, gathering ideas, watching videos. And also this is my first KL competition. So I'm very lucky to be here in the uh, winner's panel. Mm, I included this screenshot because this was, uh, wait, let me, uh, yeah, uh, this was one of the, the things that got me really hooked into this competition. Um, this sentence was, without being able to understand how RNA molecules fold, we're missing a deeper understanding of how nature works and how life began. And this really, really stuck with me throughout the whole competition. <laughs> I think I had some few sleepless nights just thinking about this stuff. Um, this is just a quick summary. I used two types of models in this competition. Uh, I used the squeezeformer architecture. Uh, this is just a transformer plus CNN. And I also used an augmented alpha fold style uh, twin tower architecture. Um, I mainly used uh, two models because I was not sure if I'll be able to uh, to make a reasonable model with uh, from the alpha fold style in the allotted time. So the squeeze former model was kind of a like a backup, like a safe option. But uh, fortunately, uh, it helped uh, having two different models. Uh, as we can see, the squeeze former architecture. This is a single model. Uh, it performed. 14237 uh, on the private. And the Twin Tower architecture performed uh, 14366 on the private. But when they were combined, I think this was uh, eight place on the private, and this was somewhere around 12. But the combination of them proved crucial for the third place. Um, I would like to talk more about the models. Uh, so. First uh, is the squeeze former architecture, as was discussed in the uh, previous uh, previous solution. Uh, the squeeze former architecture consists of uh, three modules. It's the uh, multi-head uh, self-attention module, convolution module, and feed-forward module. They are arranged in this fashion. So it's multi-head, uh, layer norm, feed-forward, layer norm, convolution, the layer norm, and then feed-forward again. Uh, this consists of one uh, squeeze former block, uh, this is repeated 14 times in my solution and then just a simple uh, out projection so we can have uh, predictions for uh, the two uh, different experiment types um, as input for this model i used uh, sequence tokens along with uh, bpp matrices um, and some of the key points are as discussed before uh, use of relative encodings the injection of uh, base pair probabilities into the attention scores and uh, also uh, using a uh, synthetically created uh, data from the uh, from the noisy uh, low signal to noise ratio data um, the way the attention scores are calculated are is, is as follows so from absolute encodings we saw it like early in the competition that this was uh, not going to work since we had like uh, the the length of the uh, input sequences were 206, and the um, the trade the test set was 457. So there was no way that uh, the model is going to generalize without seeing those positions. So I quickly changed to relative position. This uh, did the trick. I mean, the models generalized uh, pretty well. After that, the attention scores are further affected by base pair, base pair probability matrices. So the way the score is calculated is the base pair probability matrix is just uh, run through a 2D convolutional block and uh, it's added to the final score. 
so the attention scores it's just the content score so it's uh, queries uh, times the keys transposed we then add the uh, relative positional score and finally the uh, base pair probability bias um, we can see that this is the generalization plot we can see that the model uh, can uh, find the long-range pseudonaut and there are some discussions uh, and I also thought about this uh, during the competition because I didn't know if okay so the base pair probability matrices are created with software that cannot inherently I think uh, detect pseudonauts so that bias uh, is going to be transferred into the model uh, so there was like a discussion whether uh, the the pseudonaut detection is going to be reduced if we use BPPs but as we can see in this particular case, uh, BPPs just didn't uh, affect the pseudonaut. We can clearly, clearly see it. Uh, and we can also see that the model generalizes well beyond the 206 position onwards. Uh, about the second model, uh, this was uh, the model that I, uh, a more risky model, uh, if I may say. Uh, it is based on. Um, on AlphaFold, uh, on Google's AlphaFold. So the way AlphaFold works is uh, it has two representations. One is the MSA representation or multiple sequence alignment, and the other is pair representation. Um, because for this competition, uh, MSA wasn't, I think it wasn't so uh, useful because the data was created synthetically on the Eterna and there were no uh, evolutionary signals between them. So that's why I just used uh, a simple uh, one row, only the sequence. So um, the way AlphaFold works is it has uh, um, column-wise and row-wise attention. Uh, the row-wise attention, it tries to find uh, uh, signals between, I mean, in the sequence. And column-wise, it tries to find evolutionary sequence, uh, evolutionary information. Since we didn't have MSA, the uh, Input is only the input sequence. The pair representation is just a pairwise representation between uh, all of the nucleotides. So the uh, the way the AlphaFold works is it has two different pathways and they're communicating uh, between each other uh, through uh, outer product mean and through pair biasing. Uh, the way the data flows from the beginning up until the end is we have the input sequence, then the input sequence uh, is passed through uh, embedding networks. The MSA embedding network is just a simple embedding layer, and the pair representation network is, uh, uh, we, we encode 2D, uh, re relative 2D positional encodings into, the, into this uh, representation. And we also, the uh, encodings are kept uh, up until the 32 positions. So after the 30 second position, everything else is just uh, considered as far away. The MSA uh, representation is processed uh, in the original paper. It was processed uh, into axial attention, but since we don't have uh, the column, I just decided to uh, replace the axial attention with a relative uh, multi-head attention and convolution. The pair representation on the other hand is processed through uh, triangular multiplicative updates and both of them go into two layer MLP uh, before transitioning after the data goes through uh, eight of these blocks we have a uh, processed single representation and highly processed pair representation from the single representation we can uh, we can gather uh, chemical reactivity predictions we can also gather uh, per nucleotide confidence so for each nucleotide we can gather how confident our model is. And for the pair representation, we can use it as uh, a way to recreate the base uh, pair matrices. And in that way, gather uh, the, uh, the useful information without explicitly uh, biasing the model like in the attention scores. Some of the key points that I like about this model is it has bigger potential than the squeeze former uh, architecture I used. Uh, for the submission, the model tried to figure the interaction on its own. So there were no additional inputs. There was no uh, base pair probability matrices. There was no uh, 
uh, there was no other like minimum free energy, nothing. It was just sequence as input and as output, we got the chemical reactivities. And it also, it's nice that it has the ability to provide confidence for its predictions on a nucleotide level. And the, the idea why I wanted to uh, get this feature to work is to denoise or fix the the noisy data because some of the data was noisy it had a uh, signal to noise uh, lower than one so the idea was we can predict how confident the model is for each nucleotide and then we can combine it with the actual uh, error from the experiments and in that way we can create a synthetically uh, a quality data that can aid uh, future training this is like a pseudo formula. It's uh, the confidence of the model for each particular nucleotide times the prediction and uh, the ground truth times the experimental error. This is the generalization plot uh, and the long range pseudo not. Uh, as I said, the, this model was trained only with sequences as input. Not, no other uh, additional features were used and only on the clean data set. So around uh, 380,000 samples. Uh, we can see also that this model can find the longer range pseudo not, even though it it is a bit faint, and it can detect all of the other uh, interactions. Some of the feature selection and engineering. Uh, this is for the squeeze former architecture. Uh, we can clearly see on the graph that the base model, uh, without any additional features, scores uh, fourteen seven four six on the uh, public and fifteen two six seven on the private. If, if we add the synthetic data that was created with the twin tower model, we get uh, up till uh, 0 0.14674. Uh, and then when we add the base model and synthetic data and BPPS, uh, we get uh, up until 14.237, uh, which was a standalone model and it scored, I think, uh, eighth position. Uh, the features that helped were the base pair probabilities and the synthetic data, and also the relative positional encodings. For the Twin Tower architecture, I didn't uh, experiment with any features. As I said, mm -hmm. the only feature was used was the uh, input sequences. So no additional features, only sequences input, only clean data set. Uh, so the focus was more on the model's architecture and how to cleverly extract information. So. There was no uh, feature engineering. The training methods uh, to recreate the third, the third place solution. First, the twin tower model was created on the clean data set on two uh, 4090s for about 30 hours total. 60 epochs, batch size was eight because this model was memory intensive with grad accumulation. So in total uh, on two GPUs, the effective batch size was 64 learning a rate of 1e-3, RMW, scheduling, and all the rest is just pretty uh, standard stuff. This leads to 13746 on the public and 14398 on the private, and this is a single model. After the initial training, synthetic data is created, so we can train the squeeze former model. Inference time, however, on this model was uh, longer. It is around 4.5 hours. The training procedure for the third place solution, uh, the squeeze former architecture. So the squeeze former was trained on the clean data set, but also on the synthetically created data set. Uh, longer epochs, 200 epochs, batch size 64, uh, no grad accumulation, and all of this is just standard stuff. This leads to 13865 public and 14256 private single model score. Inference time is around one hour on the full test dataset. Some important and interesting findings. Uh, most of the findings are about the Twin Tower model. So the competition submission, unfortunately, is highly unfinished. I just was competing solo and I couldn't make, uh, I was competing on two different models. Uh, only the sequences was used as input. Uh, I've tested this right now, uh, but during the competition, this whole branch, the uh, pair representation was effectively shut down. So only the single representation was used for the final submission. Uh, but however, BPPs can be used as a target from the BPP head. I've tested this and it actually gave uh, improvements in the final score. 
So we can use only sequences as input uh, during inference time, but during training time, we can train the model also on the, uh, on the base pair probabilities. So we can make the model during inference to only use a single input uh, for the predictions. This model, even though synthetic data set was available, this model was not trained on the synthetic data set. Uh, again, during because of uh, time restrictions. Uh, some early tests showed that the increase in depth, so from 8 to 12 blocks, increased the score. However, I should say that this model uh, suffers from, I mean, it doesn't suffer, but the training time is, is uh, longer than the squeeze former. So, Increasing the blocks will further increase the training time. Uh, also, recycling was not used uh, that was implemented in the original paper. This is a, a part that can be improved. Because of memory uh, problems, uh, only triangular multiplicative updates are used. Uh, the triangular self attention, as you can see, is uh, omitted. And another thing that can be uh, improved, and it's interesting finding, is that since RNA can take on uh, multiple conformations, uh, dropout, we can use dropout during uh, inference time, so we can sample uh, different uh, different uh, predictions and average them uh, to have a better a sense of the multiple uh, RNA confirmations. Uh, uh, about three minutes, then. Oh, yeah, uh, I'll be done soon. Uh, this is, again, the plot. We can see that only with the sequence uh, features as input, we can find all of the relevant uh, informations. Uh, I just want to say that during the competition, the current synthetic data set was not, uh, uh, it's not utilized the full, uh, the full options of the confidence prediction. I didn't have time to make a good formula that can combine the uh, model's prediction, the confidence about the prediction, ground truth and experimental error. So the current synthetic data set is not the best. It's uh, created by uh, weighing of the ground truth and the model's prediction. Uh, we, I, we were asked about simple model. I think the squeeze former model is simple by nature. It can be trained under 10 hours if you use the bigger batch size. And it has a pretty good uh, private score, eight place standalone model. Uh, that's it.